All right, so today we are talking military free fall um, or halo, military skydiving, whatever you want to call it. So it should be a fun video. Um, I got the uh, my my halo team, ODA plaque up today for this one. And then also we're going to be rolling a bunch of uh, footage that I have from jumps from my halo team. So um, and we've done some really cool jumps. Uh, so we'll uh, have that intermittent within the video. Um, so we'll just start right out the gate. What is military free fall, right? For those of you who don't know, or a halo team. So military free fall is essentially an infiltration platform to get troops from point A to point B, right? And we do that through skydiving, essentially. Um, you'll typically hear this called halo or halo team, right? But there's two different variations of military free fall. You have excuse me, halo, which is high altitude, low opening. And then you have what's called a hey ho, which we typically train more often, which is a high altitude, high opening jump. So what are the differences? So halo is typically, um, you know, what you would think of a regular skydiving jump, right? So you're up at altitude, say 13,000 feet. Everybody jumps out, they free fall for, you know, 40, 45 seconds. Um, and then pull their parachute and everybody comes in and lands. Whereas a hey ho is where everyone jumps out from, you know, anywhere from eight to 18,000 feet. And rather than free falling, when you jump out, you basically wait a couple seconds and then you immediately pull your parachute, right? So um, there's not really any free fall involved in that. And so what that's gonna do is everybody's gonna come up under canopy at the plane elevation. So. What is the purpose of that? So essentially the idea is that, you know, you can offset a plane out of sight and sound and radar distance, and then guys can jump out from upwards of 18,000 plus feet under oxygen if need be. And you can fly in from, you know, miles and miles away um, without being detected. Okay. So that's sort of the, uh, the, the basics of it, right? So what what do uh, what do those jumps actually look like on an ODA, right? So you have your your halo or your skydiving jumps, which we do a lot of, um, which you know what you might call fun jumps, right? Everybody jumps out and does the skydiving thing and pulls their parachutes and comes in sort of individually. Um, but when we're training tactically on the hay hose, um, just for some generics, essentially how it looks is that's more of a team um, event, right? So. We are all exiting the aircraft one after another within, you know, maybe a second in between, um, pulling the parachutes, all coming under canopy, right? And then getting yourself squared together. And then we are getting in what's called a stack, right? Um, and then beginning to uh, basically navigate our way from however many miles away to the target drop zone. So um, usually the way that's controlled is you have a low man and a high man, right? And we all have radios on, we can talk. And essentially your low man is the lowest person in the stack. Everybody's sort of following him, right? And he is the navigator. He's navigating his way uh, to the target. And then you have the high man, so the highest guy in the stack. He's sort of watching everything below him and um, controlling guys, you know, trying to get guys more effectively in the stack and trying to get everybody as close as possible, right? Um, because you have to keep in mind, you know, it's cool that we do this during the day um, for fun and whatnot, but this is something you would do at night um, for any real world actual mission, most likely, right? So skydiving at night under nods is, uh, intense and quite chaotic and pretty scary in a lot of ways, right? Um, you never know when <laughs> some guy's going to come zooming at you, right? Uh, so everybody needs to be, you know, head on a swivel and getting guys in that stack to where everybody is following each other all the way into the ground to make sure that we can do that safely, right? Because um, anything that goes wrong obviously has an extreme risk of, of death. Um, so we can't afford to make mistakes in that regard. So what did, um, what did I really like about being on a Halo team? So for me, it took me, you know, I went to Halo school, which is military free fall school that we go to, to be able to do uh, military free fall. Um, 
I went straight out of the Q course, right? So before I ever even got to group, got to a team, I went to Halo school. I was, I was fortunate that I got to do that. However, that doesn't mean you're going to go to a Halo team, right? So um, there was no slots for 18 Echoes on the Halo team when I got to my company. So I went to a combat dive team, which was great. But, um, you know, I was on the combat dive team for three, three and a half years and then um, dealt with some injuries from Afghanistan. Went to a mountain team for a couple years. And then finally, after about five years on a team, one of my old teammates uh, took a team sergeant slot on a Halo team. And I was able to go to go out to Okinawa and be on his military free fall team for a couple years um, towards the end of my ODA time, which was which was awesome, right? So, um, you know, it's it was my favorite thing to do, you know, military free fall, skydiving. It's, it's awesome once you get used to it. Um, but, uh, it, it actually takes a lot of jumps, right? So I remember for probably upwards of my first 50 jumps, uh, I, it was, I was not good and I was always terrified, right? So you're, um, it's, it's, it's not so much, you know, that you're doing your regular, um, skydiving jumps. That's that scary or anything like that. But when you get into these halos and hop and pops, what it's called, where you're jumping out of the plane. Um, and then within a couple seconds pulling your parachute, that's actually um, a pretty difficult thing to do correctly. And you can end up tumbling and, you know, um, it can be very chaotic, right? So I, I like most guys, dealt with a lot of uh, uh, scary jumps um, as I was first learning how to do it. Um, once you hit about your, and it's kind of the saying, once you hit about your 50th jump, it's sort of like the blinders come off a little bit um, and you start to become a little bit more comfortable with your jumps. And then, you know, close to about a hundred jumps is when I really felt comfortable and, um, you know, experienced and, and really felt good in the sky and doing all those different types of things. Um, so what's something else I really liked about a halo team is now this is just my experience, but it's kind of what I've, I saw, you know, we did a lot of cross training with different halo teams and it seemed to be, um, the same through most halo teams is halo teams really take their um, uh, their team specific jobs seriously, right? So hey, military free fall. So there's all kinds of different teams on ODAs, mountain teams, dive teams, halo teams. Not that other teams don't, but halo teams really sort of lean in and focus and direct a ton of their training into their specific task, which is cool. Um, and it's kind of needed because again, that's such a high risk um, type of event that, uh, you sort of you sort of have to um, devote that much attention and training to it. So, um, what uh, what are what were some of my favorite jumps? So there's some there'll be some footage in here of a um, jump we did out in Japan, where we basically jumped out under full cloud deck, couldn't see the ocean over the top of the ocean, and basically hit a tiny little island, um, hundred meter maybe a couple hundred meter by hundred meter box island with our entire ODA. Um, that was probably one of the coolest, wildest, um, jumps, but, uh, also doing, you know, 18,000 foot night jumps under full oxygen. Um, that's <laughs> guys, that's a uh, wild, wild stuff as well. Um, and you know, just so many other things about, you know, Halo team, you get a ton of time in the wind tunnel and you really get to, you know, hone your craft and, and actually get good at skydiving, which is a really cool thing that, the government, you know, is paying you to do. So, um, you know, unfortunately Halo team for new guys is really hard to get to. Uh, you gotta get lucky, um, one to go to a Halo team or get a Halo school slot. But if you're fortunate enough to, um, to do that, then, uh, then it's a, it's a really, really awesome type of team to be on. So hope that gives you guys a little bit better understanding about you know, military free fall, halo versus hey ho, and what that actually looks like and, and how those jumps actually work on a team. So hope you guys enjoyed that and have a good day.